Hi everyone, this is Anna from NurseStudy.net and today we're going to be speaking about diuretics. Diuretics are drugs that increase urine production and urine volume through the excretion of sodium and water. These are often referred to as water tablets or water pills because they cause urinary frequency. And now we're going to look at the classification of diuretics. There are five classifications of diuretics based on how and where they work in the kidneys. Loop diuretics. These are considered the most potent diuretics because they produce the most diuresis of urine production among all types of diuretics. They act on the ascending tubes of the loop of Henle, hence the name loop diuretics. And then we have osmotic diuretics. These diuretics work by preventing the reabsorption of sodium and water in the kidneys. They act on the proximal convoluted tubules and the descending part of the loop of Henle in the kidneys. These drugs commonly come in injectable forms. Thiazide diuretics. Thiazide and thiazide-like diuretics cause diuresis by preventing the reabsorption of sodium and chloride from the distal convoluted tubules in the nephrons of the kidneys. Potassium sparing diuretics. These diuretics are considered weak diuretics and are often given in combination with another diuretic. They work by inhibiting sodium reabsorption in the collecting tubules of the kidneys. In doing so, they also prevent potassium from being secreted. Carbonic and hydrase inhibitor CAIs. These induce diuresis by preventing sodium reabsorption in the proximal tubules of the kidneys. Indications for diuretics. Diuretics are usually prescribed to treat hypertension, fluid volume excess, and edema. However, some diuretics are licensed for use in other conditions too. High blood pressure. Diuretics can be used to lower blood pressure by lowering blood volume. Edema. Fluid volume excess in body tissues can lead to edema. Different conditions can cause edema where diuretics can be used like congestive heart failure or CHF, cirrhosis of the liver, edema secondary to corticosteroid therapy, edema secondary to estrogen therapy, or even renal dysfunction. Other indications could be urinary calcium excretion, glaucoma, osteoporosis, or diabetes insipidus. Actions of diuretics. The normal mechanism of kidneys includes filtering of water, salts, and waste. Water and salt are reabsorbed back into the bloodstream while the body waste is excreted in the urine. Diuretics work by inhibiting the reabsorption of water and salt, therefore increasing urine output. The excretion of water and salt leads to reduced salt and water levels in the bloodstream. This causes hypovolemia, which then reduces blood pressure and excess fluid in the body. All diuretics work to prevent salt and water reabsorption. However, they do this through different mechanisms in parts of the kidneys. CAIs and osmotic diuretics act on the proximal convoluted tubules. Loop diuretics act on the loop of Henle, while thiazides act on the distal convoluted tubule and potassium sparing diuretics on the collecting duct. Now we're going to look at side effects and adverse reactions of diuretics. Common side effects of diuretics include hypotension, dry mouth, and thirst. Now we're going to look at adverse reactions of diuretics that require potentially immediate intervention. Hypokalemia, and here we'll see weakness, muscle cramps, muscle pain, muscular fatigue, and possibly dysrhythmias. Other adverse reaction would be hyponatremia, which is a low sodium level, which is associated with neurologic damage and could be fatal. Lethargy, drowsiness, restlessness, confusion, seizures, oliguria, gastrointestinal symptoms, increased or decreased blood sugar, and increase in uric acid level can occur, which can cause gout. We're going to look at contraindications and cautions for diuretics. So diuretics are generally safe. However, certain precautions are necessary to prevent adverse effect and complications from taking these drugs, such as hypersensitivity to the drug or any component of the drug. A previous allergy to diuretics is a contraindication for taking these drugs. Caution should be taken when diuretics are administered to people with the following conditions. Electrolyte imbalances, because diuretics work by preventing the reabsorption of salts in the kidney. 
This leads to abnormal levels of electrolytes in the bloodstream, including potassium, calcium, and sodium. Also look for renal dysfunction. Diurex can further disrupt the normal functioning of the kidneys. People with renal dysfunction should be carefully monitored when taking diuretics. Problems with urination. If there are issues with urination, the drugs may not work as expected and the urinator problem may get worse. Also, a low salt diet is recommended when taking diuretics, as a high salt diet can counteract the effects of the diuretic drugs. It is also recommended to avoid salt substitutes as they are commonly rich in potassium. Intake of salt substitutes with potassium sparing diuretics can lead to hyperkalemia. Also, alcohol has a diuretic effect. Drinking alcohol when taking diuretics can lead to severely low blood pressure. And finally, calcium supplements should be taken with caution. Diurex can increase the calcium level in the blood. Taking calcium sup supplements can lead to seriously high levels of calcium in the bloodstream. Drug interactions with diuretics. Diurex can interact with other medications, which may affect how well the drug works or how the side effects could likely occur. The following are medications that should be used with great considerations when given with diuretics. Diabetes drugs. Thiazide diuretics interact with drugs used to treat diabetes such as insulin and oral hypoglycemic agents. Thiazide directs lower blood levels of antidiabetic drugs. Increasing the dose of antidiabetic drugs may be necessary when given with diuretics. Digoxin. Thiazide and loop diuretics can cause severely low potassium levels when administered with digoxin. Low potassium levels can cause serious problems involving the heart. Lithium. Lithium also interacts with thiazide diuretics and loop diuretics. Both of these diuretics reduce the elimination of lithium through the urine, therefore can cause toxicity. ACE inhibitors in NSAIDs. Angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can cause high levels of potassium in the blood when administered with potassium-sparing diuretics. So now we're going to look at some possible nursing diagnoses for people who are taking diuretics. One could be risk for decreased cardiac output, another risk for electrolyte imbalance, hypokalemia or hyponatremia, risk for deficient fluid volume related to increase in fluid volume excretion, risk for impaired urinary elimination, risk for hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia, especially for diabetic patients, risk for sleep deprivation related to increased urinary frequency. Okay, so this is Nurse Anna, and this completes our um, review of diuretics. Please visit us at nursestudy.net for more nursing care plans, NCLEX practice exams, uh, general pathology, pathophysiology, um, and cheat sheets. Okay, so this is Nurse Anna from nursestudy.net, and we'll see you soon.